Hi everybody, today it's another gear review and another pocket LED light. So this is the Andy Cine R1 RGB light. Let's take a look. Now I've reviewed a lot of pocket lights recently and um, I'm a bit over reviewing pocket lights to be quite honest with you. So I think this is the third, fourth one I've reviewed this year. Um, but I've got to say with all the pocket lights, it absolutely amazes me what you get for your money. All of them that I've reviewed are a staggering value for money. Uh, this unit is 70 US dollars, which is pocket money in film and television. 70 US dollars, and you get a bicolor light with um, RGB capability that has a built-in battery. That's pretty staggering, and you know, sensational build quality, metal casing, so um, that, that's amazing. So let's go over the light. On the top, you've got a on-off slider switch. Next to the power button on the top is the mode selector button, and this toggles through the three modes that the unit has. So the first mode is your CCT, which is your white light mode. This has uh, quite a big range of CCT, not as much as they claim. We'll talk about that in a second. The next mode, so press the button to change the modes. The next mode is the color mode, which has 360 colors. And then the last mode, once I press the button again, is uh, effects mode seven built-in effects. Now on the side is a push button rocker. Now uh, if you push upwards, your values increase. If you push it downwards, the values decrease. And if you push the rocker in, you can change what you're selecting. And the last thing on the side of the unit is the USB port, which is for running the light off external power or charging the internal battery. Now the internal battery will run the light at full power for one hour and 40 minutes. That's not the manufacturer's claim, that's my testing. Okay, so let's have a look at what you get for your 70 US dollars or around 70 US dollars. You of course get the light. You get a little pouch to put the light in. Now this is gonna protect the light from being scratched but it won't help you much if you drop the light. Um, this seems to be a trend at the moment with um, pocket uh, LED lights. Uh, every single light seems to now come with a cleaning cloth. So I don't know why, uh, why it's necessary to have a cleaning cloth, but they're there anyway. Uh, and this one also comes with a shoe mount. Okay, so you can mount it to the top of the camera. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, of course, there is a standard industry thread on the bottom of the unit. So you can mount it to a camera, you can mount it to a swivel and tilt, uh, a magic arm or anything like that. And the unit also comes with a USB-C type charger cable. Now, um, let's get into the negatives and bear in mind with the negatives that this is only a $70 light. And my review criteria is for lights that cost thousands of dollars. So I am a little bit more critical than most reviewers. All right, so let's get into the negatives. So the first negative I have is the claimed CCT range. On the box, they claim the CCT range is 2,500 Kelvin to 7,000 Kelvin. Now, when I ran my meter over the unit, I only got a range of 2,628 Kelvin to 6,315 Kelvin. So the bottom end's not too bad, but the top end is about 700 Kelvin short of where it should be. Now, that leads us on to our second uh, issue or our second negative, and that is the CCT values on the back of the unit the target CCT values don't align to what the light is actually generating. Now to give you some idea, the higher the CCT value you enter, the further off the target value you are. Now in your bottom ranges, your very warm whites, you're looking at an accuracy of plus or minus 73 Kelvin, which is actually very, very good. However, in your cool whites, that's 5,000 Kelvin to 6,000 Kelvin, you're looking at an average accuracy of minus 812 Kelvin. So that's a fair bit to be out. So uh, basically, you've got to bear in mind, it is a $70 US light. If you're going to be setting your color temperature, you're better off eyeballing it than reading the display on the back. It is quite a fair way out. Now the next negative on this, or possible negative for you, is that the unit only dims down to 10%. It doesn't dim below 10%. The next negative is um, in the color mode. It only generates 360 colors. So it's got its full hue circle like every light, like every HSI light has, but this thing can't desaturate its colors. 
So if you're gonna use an RGB color with this, it's all or nothing. It's full saturated, you can't desaturate it. And the last negative is the light doesn't have phone app capability. Okay, now let's talk about the positives of this unit. And the first big positive is how bright this thing is. This is the brightest of any of the pocket LED lights that I have tested. Now, set to 3200 Kelvin at one meter, this thing was spitting out 243 lux. Now to give you some idea of how bright this is in real terms, I used it to light up my kitchen area. Now the rest of my house is lit with all the down lights turned on, and that kitchen area is lit with just the one Andy Cine light. Now I also did a shootout with the other pocket lights I have to compare the brightness. And these are the results at 3200 Kelvin with the light one meter away from the meter. So this light was spitting out 243 lux, which makes it 141% brighter than the Aperture MC, 62% brighter than the 6C tube light, and 49% brighter than the digital photo pocket chameleon. Now this thing's set to daylight, 5,600 Kelvin, was spitting out 268 lux, which makes it a staggering 168% brighter than the Aperture MC, 64% brighter than the 6C Pavo Tube 2, and 47% brighter than the Digital Photo Pocket Chameleon LED. Now the next positive for this unit was a big surprise for me, and that was the color rendering. This unit, has the best color rendering of any LED I've tested to date. Now with the exception of a few TLCI scores uh, at the bottom Kelvins that were 98, this thing scored consistent 99 across its range. Now the TN30 color scores were also quite impressive. This thing averaged plus 94. Now plus 90 is good for a TN30 color vector test. Plus 94 is particularly good. Now, this unit also recorded the single highest TM30 RF color vector score that I've ever metered on an LED light. And that was right down at its base Kelvins, and the score was 97%. And the last big plus for this unit is the internal battery. Not only is this thing very, very bright, but you can run it at full brightness for one hour and 40 minutes off the internal battery. Now, if one hour and 40 minutes isn't enough battery runtime for you, you can run it off an external battery. Now, here's the thing you need to bear in mind. The light pulls 10 watts. That's quite a lot for a USB powered device. So you wanna make sure that your battery can output 2.4 amps, okay? So there's quite a few batteries that can do that, but they're not the cheap ones. Now, just getting sidetracked for a little bit, I quite often get asked what uh, USB batteries I use for my devices. So this is, um, a Lumen Radio controller. And the device, uh, the batteries I use to power these devices are Wapals. So they're quite an expensive battery, but you do pay for the reliability and you do pay for the output capacity. So you wanna make sure you get a battery that can output 2.4 amps and you'll be able to run this no problem. My next bit of advice, if you're gonna try and run a USB powered device off an external battery, is charge the internal battery first. If you've got your external battery powering your light plus charging the internal battery, it'll go flat really quick. All right, so let's have a look at a few things this unit can do. So I'm not gonna bother showing you the CCT mode. That's pretty boring. But uh, what I will do is scroll through the 360 colors that the unit can generate. Now let's have a look at the effects that this thing can generate. So it's got seven built-in effects. They're not that fantastic, but it is only a $70 light. Let's take a look. This is effect number one. This is effect number two. This is effect number three.
effect number four. Effect number five, so I think that's meant to be cop car lights. Effect number six, which is a, a different cop car light by the look of it. And effect number seven. All right, now let's go over the technical results for the light. So uh, we'll start off with CCT accuracy first. Now in the very warm whites, that's uh, two, two and a half thousand Kelvin to 3000 Kelvin, it dialed in a CCT with an average accuracy of plus or minus 73 Kelvin. In the warm whites, that's 3000 Kelvin to 4000 Kelvin, its average accuracy was minus 336 Kelvin. In its mid whites, 4000 to 5000 Kelvin, its average accuracy was out by minus 664 Kelvin, so minus 664. And in its cool whites, it was out by an average of minus 812 Kelvin. Now let's have a look at the Television Lighting Consistency Index scores, TLCI scores. In the very warm whites, that's 2,500 to 3,000 Kelvin, the average TLCI score was 98.5. In the warm whites, that's 3,000 to 4,000 Kelvin, the TLCI score was a consistent 99. In its mid whites, that's 4,000 to 5,000 Kelvin, again, a consistent 99 on every single reading. And in the cool whites, that's 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin, a consistent 99 again. Now let's have a look at the TM30 color vector test results. Now, it averaged in the very warm whites a staggering 96.2. In the warm whites, it averaged a 95.25. In the uh, mid whites, it averaged a consistent 94. And in the cool whites, it scored a 94.5. Now, let's take a closer look at our more commonly used Kelvins, starting with 3200. When I dialed in 3,200 Kelvin, I got 2,988 with a TLCI score of 99. The average CRI score was 96.3 and only R12 was below 90. TM30 color vector testing reveals a more accurate score would be 96% color render with 102% saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. And color mapping reveals that the light is off the Planckian curve by 0 0.0013 delta UV, which would be roughly the equivalent of half of a 1 8 correction gel. When I dialed in 4,400 Kelvin, I got 3,748 Kelvin with a TLCI score of 99. The average CRI score was 95.1 with R10 and R12 below 90. Color vector testing reveals a more accurate score would be 94% with 102% color saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. And color mapping reveals that the white point is off the Planckian curve by minus 0 0.0028 delta UV, which is roughly a 1 8 correction gel. When I dialed in 5,600 Kelvin, I got a staggeringly bad 4,780 Kelvin. If you want to get closer to 5,600 Kelvin, you will actually need to dial in 6,450 Kelvin. The TLCI score was 99 and the average CRI score was 96.6. However, R9 and R12 are very low. Color vector testing reveals a more accurate score would be 95% color render with 102% color saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. And at this color point, I don't think it's any coincidence that the delta UV scores zero. Now let's have a look at how accurately this unit dials in its color vectors in its hue mode. Red, which should be zero degrees, came in at one degree. Green, which should be 120 degrees, came in at 119 degrees. Blue was smack on the money at 240 degrees. Yellow, which should be 60 degrees, came in at 54 degrees. Cyan, which should be 180 degrees, was way off at 220 degrees. And magenta, which should be 300 degrees, came in at 264 degrees. Okay, well that's it for this review, but I'm currently working on other reviews. So I'm currently working on the Nanlite 60 Bicolor. 
I'm also working on a review of the Nanlite Forza 200, as well as a review of the Light Matte Spectrums. So if you don't wanna miss those reviews, don't forget to click like and subscribe.